Welcome to the Pro Tips video series designed to arm biology learners with background knowledge needed to kick butt during upcoming lessons. Students are encouraged to watch these tutorials before attending lecture on the topic and rewatch them again while studying. I'm Professor Workman and today's Pro Tips address the common misconception that humans are descended from chimpanzees. This is not true. Let's first consider some things that are true about humans and chimpanzees. Both species are alive today. Usually when we think about ancestors, we're thinking about bygone generations, individuals who lived in the past rather than our contemporaries. But humans and chimps are contemporaries. Here's where the facts get interesting. Genetic analyses have revealed that humans and chimps share 96% identical DNA. This is a high degree of similarity and it did not happen by chance. You may be wondering how two individuals can end up with so much identical DNA. So let's examine how this came to pass. Consider this family tree. The parents are the generation at the top and they had two children, a boy and a girl. Each child inherited 50% of their DNA from mom and the other 50% from dad. To be clear, your DNA comes from your parents. This is called genetic inheritance. Through a sperm, a dad contributes 50% of the child's DNA and through an egg, mom contributes the other 50%. Do you follow? Where does your DNA come from? Your parents. So imagine that this mom has a certain sequence of DNA that she passed to both of her children. As is true in all families, siblings, including half siblings, have some identical DNA because they inherited it from their shared parent. Now these kids grow up and find mates and have children of their own. This sequence of DNA that originated in grandma continues being passed down to all of her descendants. At the bottom of this family tree are all of her grandchildren, so they are cousins to each other. These cousins have some identical DNA because each of them inherited it from their shared grandparent. When these kids grow up, they find mates and the story continues. When they have children of their own, the genetic sequence is passed on to the subsequent generation. This is how genetic inheritance works. You just follow the family bloodline. Everyone with this genetic sequence is related and they all trace the origin of the sequence to their most recent shared ancestor, this lady. One other thing to note on this family tree is that each generation is recorded along a row. These rows represent the average year individuals in that generation had their kids. So here is when great grandparents had their kids. This is when grandparents had their kids. And this is when the parents had their own kids. Different families may have different generation times and therefore the distance between these red bars could be slightly different. It becomes more interesting when we're comparing species because different species may have dramatically different generation times. And this may be important to consider if you're an animal breeder. Next, let's look at another way to draw family trees. These two trees display the same information. The new type of tree on the right looks like a branching root system. Each branch point called a node represents a split between two lineages. Lineage one descended from this guy here, and lineage two descends from his sister. Notice that each lineage ultimately leads down to the current generation. Each node on this tree reflects a set of ancestors. Node A reflects the point when the original great-grandparents had children. Node B represents when their son had his own family. Node C represents when their daughter had her own family. 
then those kids grew up and nodes D, E, F, and G represent each of those families, all the way down to the current generation, meaning the children who are alive today. So notice that each time a parent has multiple kids, they create multiple lineages. I would like to point out that these time signatures are the same. Node A is drawn a certain distance above nodes B and C to indicate generation time, or the average of number of years it took for those kids to grow up and have children of their own. And the same is true of the distance between the grandparents' generation and the, the parents' generation. This brings us to our first key term, lineage. A lineage is a genetic family who traces their descent from a common ancestor, meaning that everyone in the lineage can follow their bloodline back to the same individual, the ancestor that they have in common. So if we're looking at a lineage that includes all of these folks in the current generation, they all trace their bloodline back to this great grandmother, their most recent common ancestor. All individuals in a lineage likely share some identical sequences of DNA because they all inherited it from the same place, their shared ancestor. These kids in the current generation are related by blood because they have the same set of great grandparents. Now think about your family tree going way, way back in time. You are connected to all those individuals through a series of subsequent generations that ultimately culminated in your birth. In order to wrap your head around this, imagine standing side by side with your mother holding her hand. You two look similar because you share half of your DNA. Now imagine on your mother's other side is her mother. Although you may share some traits with your grandmother, she is less like you than your mom. Extending this logic down your line of ancestors, you may reach a point in this cosmic family reunion where, although looking similar to her own mother and daughter, the individual looks so different from you that you would no longer call her a human. Somewhere back then, this lineage leading to you split from its sibling. These lineages grew apart. They lived under different conditions and over time, each accumulated its own unique set of features. Through successive generations, the lineages became less and less alike. And you don't necessarily know all of your distant cousins personally, so who knows who this contemporary individual is, what they look like, how they live their lifestyle. But you do know that since you share a common ancestor, you will have some identical DNA. And if you send a sample off to someplace like Ancestry.com, you may get connected with some distantly related folks. Turns out that this contemporary cousin is a chimpanzee. <laughs> Remember that 96% of the DNA of our two species is identical. The other 4% reflects unique genetic changes that accumulated within each separate lineage leading up to modern day chimps or modern day humans. This means that the amount of time between the last shared ancestor and the current generation was only enough time to accumulate 4% differences in our DNA. Had more time passed, we would expect to see more differences. So this is another true thing about humans and chimpanzees. The differences in our DNA reflect simultaneous evolution that occurred in both lineages. The genetic differences between our species comprising just 4% of our DNA includes sequences that are unique to chimps as well as sequences that are unique to humans. This means that both lineages simultaneously accumulated unique sequences between when our last common ancestor lived and today. In other words, both species are equally evolved. 
In summary, you learned that a lineage is a genetic family tracing descent from a common ancestor. Therefore, all individuals in a lineage share some identical sequences of DNA. You also learned that chimpanzees and humans are the current generation of a large family tree. The two species are distant cousins who share some identical sequences of DNA because both lineages passed it down from their common ancestor. Therefore, chimpanzees and humans are considered equally evolved. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, you might consider watching other videos in the series. Here's my contact information and I always welcome any feedback. mworkman at pima.edu. Good luck in your biology journey.